House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is having a hard time securing the 218 votes he needs to become Speaker of the House. He can only lose four Republican votes to have any shot at claiming the gavel, and yet five Republicans from the ultra-conservative Freedom Caucus, and formerly known as the Never Kevins, have vowed to vote as a faction against McCarthy. With less than three weeks until that deciding vote, McCarthy is showing signs of desperation. Just this week, he took the unusual step of pushing committee leadership races until after the speaker election on January 3rd. McCarthy's travails could lead the House to have its first multi-ballot speaker election since 1923. We've got the perfect person to talk to about this. His name is John Bresnahan, co-founder of Punchbowl News. John, thank you so much for being here on set to talk about this. So am I being, am I being hyperbolic here about the travails that Leader McCarthy is facing in getting to 218? No, he's got a problem. He's right now, he could not get there. Uh, as you mentioned, there's five votes publicly against him. Now, he's working on all these guys. Some of them he's not going to get. Andy Biggs of Arizona, he's going to challenge McCarthy. He's running for speaker against McCarthy. Mm -hmm. uh, he ran against him in, they have the House Republican Conference. He ran against him internally. Now he's running against him publicly on the floor. Uh, there's a couple more, Bob Good of Virginia, Matt Gates of Florida. They're never going to vote for McCarthy, no matter mm -hmm. what. But McCarthy hopes to... There's a couple on that list that he hopes to get. Matt Rosendale, uh, he, you know, he'll work on. Ralph Norman, he'll work on. So he's trying to get them. He's working all these conservatives all the time. He's on the phone constantly with mm -hmm. these guys, talking to them, trying to get an idea. Of what do they want? What can we do? Can, you know, is there something I can give you or you would agree to that you would support me on? The okay, floor? I'm going to get to this okay. something, I, something I can give you <laughs> in, in a moment. But in terms of the phone calls, McCarthy's yeah. making phone calls. His yeah. allies are making phone yeah. calls. In the New York Times story a few days ago, there's a little nugget in there that jumped to my, made, made me jump in surprise. Former President Donald Trump who I swore was going to shank him, you know, any day now, his, his political ambitions, is making calls on McCarthy's behalf, trying to get, help him get the 218 votes. Is that for real? Is he really doing that? He is. It's of some value. It's, if he was, if he was currently president, and of course it would be a, a completely different thing. It's of some value. It will. Mm -hmm. It can't hurt McCarthy. Let's put it that way. But there's others calling. Sean Hannity's calling people. Hannity. There's a, yeah. There's other folks who are out there calling uh, on McCarthy's behalf. Now, you have to remember, a leadership election is not a popularity contest. Members vote for somebody for a leader or for a speaker because it helps them. How it helps them mm -hmm. is it is a test. Does it help me with my reelection? Does it help me with fundraising? Does it help me with committees? There's all sorts of different levels, but it's not a popularity contest. So there's only a limited value from the outside pressure. But McCarthy's got this whole inside-outside game going. He's got folks calling from the outside, from their districts, donors. And on the inside, he's working it. His allies inside the conference are working it. So he's got he's, he's going to really ramp up the pressure over the next two weeks. But I will say, I don't think this gets resolved until, I mean, the vote is January 3rd, the speaker vote. The House comes in, they have a quorum, and then the next vote is a speaker, openly on the floor. A roll call vote for speaker. Everybody stands up and votes. And I don't think it may be resolved until that day or the day before. Huh. It, could be, it could go right up to the wire. For someone who, who you say has an inside-outside yeah. game and really ramping up the pressure, shouldn't he have this sewn up by now? I mean, that's a rhetor actually, yeah. that's a rhetorical question uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you really think about it. So then is it, am I right in thinking that McCarthy pushing off the committee, the committee um, races until after the speaker vote, is that part of the pressure? that says to people, hey, you want, to, you want your committee assignments, you want your committee leaders, well, we're not going to do it until you give me the gavel. Is that... That's part of it. Also, he doesn't want to alienate anybody. For instance, the ah. Ways and Means Committee is up, there's three Republicans running for it. Right. So if you pick one, the other two have a, something, you know, ah, they got something. Right. <laughs> uh, now, he's only can lose, they, they because of poor uh, Mr. McEachin dying, uh, they Democrat from uh -huh. Virginia. So his number going in that day will be, he'll have 222 Republicans, he'll have 212 Democrats, there'll be one vacant seat in the beginning of this Congress. So he can lose four votes, but there's ways to play around that there's, they could, a member, if you don't want to vote for McCarthy, you could vote present. Right. Which could help him a little bit. It's better than voting no.
So he, there's ways, there's different ways he can play this game. This has happened in the past. Or you could not show up. He can, yeah, you can not show up. You could not show up. But yeah, with, it, with this <laughs> thin a majority, you know, right. he's going to, there's a good, but it's, we, this is, I can't tell you how much pressure is going to come in the next couple of weeks over mm -hmm. the over these members. Okay, in the couple minutes we have left, we have to yeah. talk about MTV, right. the motion to vacate. Right. This is the one thing that a lot of the Never Kevins yeah. want McCarthy to give them. What is motion to vacate and why would it signal the ultimate in weakness if Kevin McCarthy gives in, gives it to them? Motion to vacate is a procedure in the House where any member can stand up at any time. They can submit a motion and say, I want to have a vote on vacating the chair, the speaker's chair. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what eventually how conservatives tanked John Boehner back in 2013. Uh, I'm sorry, 2015. And then McCarthy at that time tried to become speaker. He couldn't, and Paul Ryan became speaker again. But what happened is when Pelosi took over the House and the Democrats took over the House after the 2018 election, they changed the motion to vacate. So only the party leadership could do it. Only the majority le or minority leader in this case could mm -hmm. do it. And what these conservatives want to do is go back and say, no, we want any member to be able to do it. And that is that is a sort of Damocles over McCarthy's head. If he gives in on that, that means at any time he he pisses these guys off, he you know, he puts a bill on the floor that they don't like, they can go and try and tank him. Now, that is it's it's they're looking, he's looking for some kind of way to give maybe not one member, maybe if you have 20 or 30 members, he's trying to do some hybrid on it. He's trying to negotiate with them. But if he gives them that, that, and he may have to, um, it is a sign of weakness, but it'll show how, you know, how much it, the stakes of this. And, you know, this is his whole career here. McCarthy has mm -hmm. nothing else here. He will go and take to this floor, he says, because he has to. His career is over if he loses his vote. He, he, you know, I don't, I don't see how he stays in Congress. So he'll negotiate on the motion of AK. He'll try to find a way. There'll be some, you know, he'll negotiate in the front with them, and there'll be, you know, allies coming in, backdoor negotiations. There's going to be a lot of talk on this. Um, and, and real fast, is Steve Scalise behind the scenes just being, you know, like, Leader in waiting, <laughs> uh, Scalise. Look, Scalise is a is a valid candidate to become speaker. Yeah, I, Scalise is supporting McCarthy. Now they're not the best of friends, but that happens often in leadership. Pelosi and, and Steny Hoyer, Hoyer, right? Right, they were not the best of friends. That is not uncommon. Uh, these are yeah. these are powerful people with big egos, and you know they can butt yeah. up against. You. Uh, Scalise is playing it straight for now, for and now. he's supporting yeah. McCarthy. You know there are folks who would support Scalise, but I think he would. Uh, you know. There's a lot to go into the speaker, not just, you know, yeah. gavel in. There's a lot more to that. Well, well